I got into filmmaking as a young kid. I was probably 12 when I picked up the first video camera um, that I didn't even own. It was a friend's video camera. And, uh, and started making movies. I started making little short films and uh, music videos and just things for fun. It was, uh, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I really was playing around um, as much as I could. I really didn't know what I was doing. I was really just playing around um, with the camera and uh, and trying to make, you know, trying to make a story like I had seen on television or I'd seen in the movies. And um, and it really grew with me. I I started to um, I started to realize the power of the medium um, and and how much I enjoyed it personally. I mean, it, it's it ended up being the thing which I've chosen to do for my life. Um, it's, uh, it's funny, you know, sometimes people say you should choose to do the thing that you do for your life, that thing that you did when you were a kid. And in this case, it's true. I'm lucky enough that, that, that it's true. When I was a kid, I used to create these stories and I used to film them and, and, uh, and then edit them together with two old VCRs. Um, and I continue to do that. Thankfully, the technology has gotten a little bit better. But um, it was, um, it started then, and then eventually, eventually I decided, um, and this is a little bit later in life, I decided that I would try to pursue it as a career. Um, changed my, my major, and, um, and then went into filmmaking full time, and, and have been doing that since then. My Cultural Divide is a, a film with uh, two different faces. It is um, a political film and it's also a personal film. Yeah, it was my first uh, feature and uh, it was my first really big project. I, um, I came onto it a bit naive. I think that I, I, I started the project, and, and purposefully so, I started the project not knowing where I was gonna go. With the story, um, I wanted to, um, I wanted to explore my politics and um, and things that I had learned about sweatshop labor, about um, about labor rights, about globalization, but I wanted to do it from an angle that I, I felt that people could relate to, and I think that's. My main goal was to make a film that people could relate to because when we see things, when we see images on the screen of people in misery, um, it, it so often seems as though it's, it's a, a dream, that it doesn't exist, that it, it certainly doesn't exist in my world. How can that exist in my world? Um, even though the, the clothes that we're wearing maybe um, are being made by those people. I had to give, I, I gave it some thought and I thought I wanted to make this a personal film too. So I, I bring the audience in by telling them my story of being a second generation immigrant, being um, a Canadian, but somebody who had family that lived in this country that I was going to be exploring, Bangladesh, but was, was also a person who had never been back. Um, it was a, it was a new experience for me. Um, and I was taking the journey with my mother. So, um, by taking that journey with her, and by by um, you know holding her her hand, I felt as though my other hand was holding the audience. I was bringing them on this little journey with me, uh, somebody that they could relate to, um, as a you know a fellow Canadian, as a lover of hockey and video games and, and everything, and uh, and then take them on that that journey to uh, that that nightmare of places like um, factories where people were being abused and uh, and and maybe they would feel a closer connection to those people that was I mean that was what I wanted to do and I hope I, I hope that it, it uh, came out that way I think if I if I'm going to like take the progression from thinking about my film from my cultural divide and taking that journey um, I think that it's it's something that was instilled on me by my mom in fact uh, which was that there was a kind of responsibility um, that, that I felt uh, 
that there were a lot of people, um, you know, and this, this is about this film particularly, uh, there was a lot of people out there that weren't as fortunate as, as I was. And they were really connected to me. Um, and, and I think that that, you know, that was what brought me to that film, but it's also what brings me to virtually everything else that I do. Um, and I'm not talking about, you know, working to help the impoverished or, or working to help um, different political movements. It's about doing what you believe in, you know, um, talking about what you believe in, um, and, and, and creating a conversation with an audience um, to, to discuss those things because they should be discussed and there, there should be a venue for that discussion. Um, I think that that's what, that's probably what brought me to it. I think, I think that the feeling that there should be this conversation and that I could be part of that conversation. I can guide that conversation. I often don't know the answers um, to these, these big questions. I, in fact, not often, I never know the answers to these big questions, but I'm very curious about asking the questions and finding out what I believe um, and finding out uh, what other people um, may believe as well and, and, and coming to some kind of, uh, maybe not conclusion, but at least um, putting out that information so that other people um, can start their conversations. I think documentary is very important because we we will empathize with the people that we um, can recognize. Um, sometimes when we watch television we can't really recognize. In fact, we will often go into television for an escape into fantasy. Um, and uh, there's a lot of people um, who, you know, that will be their, their lives. I think that documentary is important, um, and important to me, because um, we're able to, you know, specific, we were able to say that these are real people, that these are real situations, um, and that the emotions are, 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 you know, they're true to those people. Um, it doesn't mean that it's the only thing, and, and sometimes um, a fiction film will be more truthful, um, which is an odd thing to say, but I believe that you know, both you know, sides of the fence um, can be valid. I, I work in both sides. Um, I think documentary has its strengths, um, but that doesn't mean that I don't think that fiction does as well. I, I think that we, um, we should choose the medium carefully uh, when we're making a film. Sometimes, um, sometimes we want to make a fiction film. We think, how do you make a story and it's going to be, you know, with actors and, and so on. Um, and we have a, a great idea in our head, but it's not always the right route. Um, sometimes we, we should think, okay, well, maybe, maybe I should make, um, I should film people who have gone through those things first. Um, or I should, I should explore this, this subject, um, the reality of the subject. Um, and that film might be better. It, it, you know, you might be able to, I mean, you'll find some kind of truth there. Um, and then even if you decide to make that fiction film afterwards, uh, that fiction film will invariably be better. Uh, it will absolutely be a better film because you've gone through that process. Um, I think there, it's, uh, you know, it's funny because I, I have friends who are in documentary and, fic and fiction both, um, and they, they sometimes will, will mix. Um, but often people do one of those things. And sometimes I think it's a shame. I think that documentary filmmakers should sometimes make fiction films um, and, the, and vice versa. I think that it's just, it's just a medium, it's just a way of telling a story. Um, sometimes you could mix, uh, mix a genre. I'm, I actually made a film a while ago, not such a great film, but I made a, a short film that was a mix of, of documentary and fiction and I, I, I wanted to play with that. Um, and it was, 
I guess it's so in a way it was kind of telling for the you know the remainder of the continuation of my career because I have I have jumped that fence uh, a number of times I, there's no fence for me I, I like the idea that I can go back and forth I think that art and politics um, are entirely linked they are um, the two things uh, my feeling is that the two things should be linked now I, I think that it's presumptuous and and um, and probably elitist uh, to say that I know what art is in any way um, and, and to say that it has to be connected to politics I think is elitist but in my view at least in my art um, I feel that it, the two things have to be connected they're, they're just not there's no room um, for them not to be I, I think that they are that politics inform all your decisions uh, and they inform a great deal of your decisions in life but they inform the decisions that you make in your art and um, now when we talk about documentary obviously virtually all documentary has some level of politics I mean you know, even a documentary about um, deer has some level of politics in it. Um, but of course, the docu you know, documentaries that we, um, that we often hear about, and certainly the Cinema Politica, um, are entirely connected to politics. Um, and they make good films, too. Um, I think point of view is important. My feeling is that point of view um, makes a film especially if we know um, who that person is um, even before walking in to the film. I think that it's, um, it's beautiful to, to hear somebody's point of view even if you disagree with it. Um, I think it's important to, to watch films that you disagree with the point of view as well. Uh, I think that it's a shame that people tend to um, be caught in a bubble of their own politics. Um, I feel very strongly about things. I, I'm, you know, at a certain, um, I'm a certain kind of person and, and I believe in, in certain things really strongly, but um, I think that we, we should be open to watching this, watching art, experiencing art from, you know, multiple perspectives if we aren't a huge disservice to ourselves. Um, so um, art and politics, they're connected. They have always been connected. Um, and I think that uh, that is important. I'm working um, both in documentary and fiction, as I mentioned before. I am a documentary editor most of the time. It's great because I'm involved with a lot of different projects. I don't necessarily have to spend the years um, that a, a director will be working on a project. Um, but I can still be as invested in that project. Um, so as an example, I recently worked on a project called Burgundy Jazz. And it was a, um, a documentary project, but it was interesting because it's a documentary project, but it's an online, um, basically a series of online short films um, made by uh, a company called Catbird and um, and put on by the CBC. And, um, and these short films told the story of a, a small neighborhood in Montreal of, um, of uh, African-American or African-Canadian people um, and the jazz scene that grew up from there throughout the last 120 years. Um, it's, um, it was a project that I loved. It was um, uh, important thing to talk about here in Montreal that a lot of people have ignored that side of the history of the city and it even had a small connection to to me and my my family because a lot of the people we interviewed were from the Caribbean and part of my family comes from there so it was enriching and and really great I I, I was fortunate enough to be involved in that um, and then other projects I've been very fortunate to be involved in um, for my own work I'm working on um, uh, a short that is um, a documentary project takes place in, in Trinidad um, from work that I, or footage that I shot there a couple of years ago 
Um, and then I'm also working in fiction, so I'm writing a number of different things. Uh, incidentally, actually, also entirely connected to politics. So um, my, you know, my artistic practice in both fiction and documentary are totally connected. I, uh, my work um, is, um, uh, is almost the same um, in, in whatever medium that I'm using. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this uh, project right now. I'm writing two or three different scripts right now. Um, the one that I'm working on right now, this, this instant, is, uh, um, is um, very close to, to what I believe as well in terms of politics. So it's, uh, it's great. It's great, to be, have, it's great to have your fingers in a lot of pies um, and to, to be able to, um, to collaborate with good people and to work on your own stuff when you get the chance. I think that there are definitely changes that I would like to see in the support and the distribution of documentary film in Canada and worldwide. I think that there are, there are problems that stem from, um, or I should say there are problems that can be tracked down to the fact that people aren't hearing about these films. Um, and that's, the, you know, that's the distribution side. I think that a lot of people um, simply aren't being exposed to these documentaries. And, and that's a shame. Um, I think there's some great work out there that doesn't get seen. Um, and, um, and so definitely, I, I would love to see changes. Um, I would love to see more films playing in cinemas, uh, more documentary films playing in cinemas. I think that there, there is often um, difficulty placing these um, films in cinemas, and even films that do well. I think that there is um, a problem getting these films played and seen in cinemas. Um, the cinemas themselves um, are very slow to take on projects um, or to, to take on films and to show them even for a short run um, it's uh, I mean, it's often it's difficult it's an economic issue uh, those cinemas sometimes they may have their heart in the right place but um, they can't play it because they aren't getting the people to come see the films we have such a we have a system a distribution system here in Canada um, where there's a lot of power in very few people's hands and there's not a lot of cinemas there's not a lot of places you can go to show your film um, if you want to see it here in Montreal if you want to show your film here in Montreal there's only a handful of independent cinemas um, in French and English and outside of that it's it's one giant corporation that that plays everything now they have a cinema uh, in, in a place that used to be the Montreal Forum um, that used to play previously a couple of years ago used to play a lot of different types of films and it was great um, you can see um, a great number of documentaries um, foreign films um, and now they were that that chain was bought up here in Canada and, it's owned, and now it's owned by the larger chain and um, and we're seeing less of it um, they from what I understand, there was a, a commitment to, to show documentaries from out everywhere and to continue that kind of thing that they were doing. There are tons of cinemas. It's a huge place, um, and they could show lots of films. Um, but they haven't. You know, the, the commitment wasn't there. Um, and that it just shrinks the amount of place that people will see it. I mean, what's, you know, what's really wonderful about having a documentary in a multiplex like that you know, Cinema to Park is great, Eccentris is great, um, but having a multiplex with, you know, 22 different cinemas um, and having your film play, even in a small cinema, but in a, you know, in the 22nd cinema, um, is that the people who are going to see the gigantic films, um, you know, the, the, the thousands of people that are going there every day, they will see that poster, you know, as they're walking in, what is that? They'll see it up on the board. They'll say, oh, this is playing here. Because, the, you know, a lot of those people don't go to Cinema to Park. They don't go to Eccentris, but they will go to that cinema. And um, it's, it's a shame that those films aren't playing there anymore. Um, you know, some of them are, and, and, you know, I shouldn't be so harsh about it, but the, 
the truth of the matter is, is that less and less of them are. Um, my feeling is that there should be some level of, um, of intervention that cinemas have to play a certain amount of Canadian cinema. They should be forced to show a certain amount of, uh, you know, of documentary work from the country. I mean, I think that, that would just be, that would even out if you just had um, uh, enough national cinema. But there should be something in place that, that makes it um, imperative that they, that they show it because otherwise they won't. I mean, it, it, we've seen it in every other medium. If you do not um, tell someone that they, they need to do that thing, um, you know, they need to show the, they need to play a certain amount of Canadian songs on the radio. They need to show a certain amount of Canadian televisions on television. Um, they will simply stop that entirely and, and buy cheaper American content. It, it's, a, it's a sad truth. I mean, again, it's economics. I understand why they're doing it. Um, it's, it's bad reasoning, but it's, it's, it's reasoning that you can understand. And, and that's exactly what cinemas do. Um, I would love to see that changed. It, it's, uh, you know, a dream, maybe. A very difficult legislative dream. Um, but it's, uh, it's something I'd like to see happen. I think that Cinema Politica is doing fantastic work um, for a lot of people. The films that they're seeing um, at Cinema Politica worldwide, you know, whatever uh, affiliate is showing them, um, it's the only chance they have to see these films. Um, and not only is it the only chance they get to see it, it's the first it's the, maybe the first chance that they've gotten to be exposed to that kind of film. Um, being connected to um, higher learning places, establishments, is a great thing as well because you have people who are already um, soaking up information, who are um, in love with learning, and, and that's why they're there. And they're, they're um, whether they be in you know, politics or in cinema or the anthropology, or whatever they could be in, um, in virtually any um, place in the university, but they'll see that their their university is showing those films, um, and they can be part of that community. I think that's that's really important, really essential. Um, it's it's actually it's hard to believe that uh, that it's actually been such a short time that cinema like has existed because. It, it, it was needed before as well. And I think that, you know, that every university has always had some kind of film club or some kind of um, a venue that you can show, show work, whether it be documentary fiction or whatever, um, could be art films. Um, but this is, a, this is great because it's a network and it's a network that um, is showing a lot of the same types of films, if not the same films. And um, and it can it can grow together. Um, Cinema Politica isn't just a small organization that is in one university that once those people graduate will dissipate. It's a thing that has caught on um, everywhere, and and uh, and that's great. So that you know that you have this network. It and it doesn't need to be here. It started in Montreal. The birthplace of Cinema Politica is here in Montreal at Concordia. Um, but it has grown so much more than that. Um, and even if the people here were to move on to something else, there are people everywhere else that would take the mantle. And I think that's great. I think that's really important that there's those people um, who, are, who are collectively um, deciding um, and, and organizing and, and putting on these films and bringing people in. Um, it's, it's really wonderful.